with the return of professional and college football? Well, there's a lot we can learn from how these teams are getting back on the field. And it applies to your retirement planning more than you may realize. That's why today we're going to share retirement lessons from the return of sports. Good morning. I'm David Hollander, and this is Protect Your Assets. For those of you just joining us for the first time, welcome. People call me the Sandman because I help you sleep well at night by answering your most troubled tax, legal, and financial questions each week right here. And that's because I've been running a tax, legal, and financial firm. You can always ask me a question via email. Just shoot me an email to questions at pyaradio.com. Again, questions at pyaradio.com. So your retirement game plan could take a lesson from what's going on in the sports world. Athletes are back in the game, but in a new way. After a long interruption, the summer has seen the return of sports, starting the summer with the Summer Olympics in Paris. And boy, that wasn't that a great show. And now we have college and professional football. And last week's game, LSU, USC, great game. Then you just had uh, professional sports playing down in Brazil. I mean, think about that. That was kind of exciting. So now as you restart your retirement and your financial life, well, what lessons can you learn from the world of sports? Well, I've come up with five that I picked up over the last couple of weeks. I want to share those with you this morning. If you are football fans, I think you'll like these. So let's get started. So we had uh, the labor market is slowing down, not as many jobs as there were, but hey, there's still no sign of a collapse or a recession on the horizon. We saw the Dow off this past week, almost 3% down 2.9. The S&P was off 4.2%. NASDAQ got a little bit hit down 5.8. MSCI International Index off 2.5. Ten-year Treasury, not too bad, down about 0.2%, closing at 372, so yields up a little bit. Oil, uh, that was a big one this week, down 7.3%, closing at $68.18 a barrel. And bonds year-to-date keep moving up, up 4.2% year-to-date. So again, you own longer-rated bonds. You've been uh, enjoying some ride. Good for you. So we're still waiting to see what the Fed's going to do. We know they're going to uh, announce probably on the 18th of this month. And now with the S&P breaking below 5,500, and we closed Friday at 5,408. So the support level now, for those of you asking, those of you wondering where could this go over the next couple months as volatility picks up, like we talked about last week, (laughs) gave you some this week, uh, 5,186. So that's the S&P support level now, 5,186. And support on the 10-year, 365, 3.65%. And gold, $2,500 an ounce. Anyway, all right, stock markets, I think, will continue to be volatile. So I think there's a ton of similarities between pro football, college football too, and your retirement. For instance, think about this. When you think about halftime, during a college football game and the coach is giving a rousing speech to the players, they adjust their strategy and the goal becomes, let's win the second half. And you see them come out with some new momentum and you see maybe some things start to change in the game. Well, that could be the same said for your retirement. Because if you think about it, retiring is just halftime. (laughs) <laughs> There's a whole other half to play. There's more life to live. And you probably need to adjust your strategy to help reach your ultimate goal, which, of course, is not running out of money. <laughs> right? You want to maintain your lifestyle. You want to be able to do all the things you want to do. You want to keep pace with inflation. And I, lo- I love the inflation talk because, of course, there's inflation's cooling down. Everything's getting better, right? I don't know. I don't, it doesn't feel that way to me when I go to the store. I don't know about you, but it seems like everything just costs more money these days. So you got to adjust for that. And the pros have had to do some, also some new protocols and new rules. And you may remember like with baseball, remember baseball, how they decided to put a runner on second base during extra innings. I mean, what's that about? So they adjust these games 
based on the times and what they're trying to accomplish. And so think about that. Look at your financial life right now. Is it adaptable? This past year, it made sense to have a broad index to get exposure to the market, which overall has done pretty well. You know, I mean, when you look at the numbers, even though we're down this past week, check it out. The Dow's up 7% year to date. The S&P's up 13.4%. I mean, what are you complaining about? NASDAQ up 11.2. You got the bonds up 4.2. So overall, it's not a bad year. So in this new economy that we're about to step into, think about over the next couple of months, we've got a lot of things happening. We've got an election that's coming that could change the landscape of how things happen for the next four years. You got the uh, interest rates coming off all time highs we haven't seen for over 20 something years now starting to come down again. And so it's going to be really important right now to look at your portfolio and identify what could be winners and losers over the next four years, particularly if you're going to start living off of those accounts. What kind of companies that you own? What are they good? What are good? What should you own? What are strong sectors of the market that will continue to perform and even do well in the new economy, I'm going to call it? Which of the changes you've been living with these past couple years are long lasting, like AI? And how can you adjust your portfolio, your strategy to take advantage of that without taking too much exposure? I see that all the time. People come in here, they've done really well with some things, but they can't move. They can't get off of that. And and they see the portfolio drop this past week, you know, five, six, 10, 20 percent because this happens in those kind of stocks. And now they're now they're frozen. So like like you you know like I just said as of yesterday September 6th S&P's not bad up 13.4 you got oil off 4.8 same period of time so maybe you start to think about some things And that's when you got to ask your question is your financial and your wealth management strategy right now is it adaptable will it be able to change and produce that income each month cuz remember when you stop getting that paycheck All you've got is your social security, maybe some rents from properties if you've set that up properly. We can talk about that separately because maybe you're not cash flow positive, which is a bad thing. And now you've got to create that monthly paycheck from all your savings. And so when we have a bad market that say say goes for three years, like remember 2000 to 2003, you had three years there of pain. So will your portfolio currently be able to sustain something like that? Or will you be forced to keep selling as whatever it is you own keeps going down? Well, I have some good news for you today because we will be your retirement coaches this morning to help make the appropriate plays and build a solid defense so you can work towards winning your second half of life. You just have to promise us that you won't pour Gatorade all over me (laughs) if you win. So stay with me for the entire show as I'm going to discuss five retirement lessons from the return of football. You're only going to find it this morning on the Protect Your Assets show with David Hollander, the Sandman. That's me. We will be right back. Welcome back. I am David Hollander, also known as the Sandman. And this is Protect Your Assets. And every week, our aim is to help you keep all that hard-earned money you've been working so hard for. Because I know the financial markets, they go up and down. This past week, they went down. And there's always some new laws to try and figure out. So let us worry about that for you so you can keep sleeping and relaxing, enjoying the football games that are running now. Because as the show says, we're here to protect your assets. And uh, the return of football has filled a need for live action entertainment. But why do the athletes do it? Well, some, there's a paycheck, could be a major motivating factor. But also, what about the thrill of competition and the desire to crown a champion? Well, in managing your money, how are you defining success? Is it beating an index? Is it producing the income 
that you're going to need in a few years to maintain your lifestyle, not worry about that. When we have volatility like we did this past week, I mean, we saw the uh, NASDAQ drop 5.8%. Yeah, the S&P off 4.2%. Had oil drop 7.3%. So when you see that kind of volatility in a week, that should have you ask some questions about your strategy and how should you handle it if you're about to step into uh, something that's different, retirement, for instance. And so one of the things you can take away from football, from sports, coaching is the following. Always keep improving. Think about that. Just like athletes must continue to train and improve, as an investor, it's important to keep educating yourself and stay informed. While you might rely on, say, your advisor in making important financial decisions, know that the buck ultimately stops with you and keeping those advisors on track and holding them accountable for what you are trying to accomplish for yourself. So I'm going to ask you this morning, are you asking the right questions? Because your advisors should be comfortable and they should welcome questions. If you manage assets yourself, make sure you are periodically testing your own strategies and any market theories that you might believe in. So As an aside, let me just update you on something that is new. In my book, I talk about this, the Protect Your Assets book. I talk about the top four ways to make money. Number two is tax-free. And one of the ways to get tax-free income currently in retirement that is legal is through something called a health savings account. And many people think or don't even know what it is. But for those of you who do, And let's say you have a health savings account at Schwab. Well, there was a bulletin that just came out. Maybe you're familiar with HSA Bank. And in July, HSA Bank announced that they're no longer allowing new Schwab HSBA accounts to be created. No more. And this month, HSA Bank is going to update the program. So if you go in there and look at it, you're only going to be able to sell your positions. You're no longer allowed to make any buys which could be troublesome when markets are going down like they are right now. HSA Bank is going to coordinate what they call in-kind transfers. In other words, they're going to force you to liquidate, to transfer your account out of Schwab beginning the second quarter of 25. So now is a great time if you have an HSA or you're thinking about setting up an HSA or using an HSA in retirement, which I encourage you to think about and understand because it's another way to grow money tax-free that you could use for your long-term care. And then if you don't need it, well, you can pass it on to your estate. Again, you can do this tax-free. So there may be some other options for you if you have a Schwab HSBA through HSA Bank because we do have relationships with other providers who can help you with that. And if you're not aware of that, well, now you are. Another question you should ask is, how will the conservative part of your portfolio, I'm talking right now about your fixed income, your safe stuff, how will that fare in the future as the Fed starts to lower interest rates? So you have to ask yourself the question, how will your fixed income portfolio, and I'll give you a scenario here because I've seen this at least over the last three decades, happen at least once every decade. And that's the following. We have a market that goes down substantially, meaning stocks, S&P 500, et cetera, drop over 30%. And that could be very short-lived. It could be three years. And if something like that were to happen with your equities, and now you say you need 10 or 15 or 20 or $30,000 a month to pay your bills, you're going to sell off those stock positions when they're down 30, 40, 50, 60%. To pay those bills? Or are you going to have part of your portfolio in things that don't move that badly or that could be insured and then don't move at all? They're called alternatives. They're out there. Will international markets continue to lag in the next decade? If you look at statistics, they have been lagging the domestic markets, but will that go on? Good question. What are you going to do about it? What are you doing about it? (laughs) What indexes are you using right now and why? I love this. People all the time will say, well, 
I compare your returns on my portfolio to the S&P 500, and I say, well, wait a minute. You took our risk alize test. You scored a 40, and you're saying you want the S&P 500 because you heard your neighbor talk about how much money they made this year? And you say, oh, what does that mean? And I say, well, the S&P 500, let's call it on the risk alize score right now, is a 73, and you're a 40. And 100 is the top level of risk. 100 would be like a Bitcoin. And so as you move up that scale, you take on more risk. What it means is, is in the next six months, if my risk alize tool says that something that's a 73 could go down, say, 27%, but you're at a 40 and you are going to go down maybe 10% in that same sort of market condition, you're comfortable with the 10% down, but not the 27% down, <laughs> well, that's... That's the, that's the corollary because on the upside, you're not going to get all the upside of the S&P 500 because you're not taking all that risk. You might. You might get lucky and it could happen. I mean, these things do happen. But then what index are you using? Because if you're comparing the S&P 500 to say what you're doing and you have 15 different strategies in your portfolio, we should be looking at 15 different indexes then because indexes only match what it is that you're doing. And perhaps you're doing something that's not an index. It's unique to you because you have desires and you have things you want to have happen in the next five to 10 years. And you don't want to flex on that. You want that to be there no matter what's going on. And you can do that. You can build your tank if you want. You just have to be confident about and understand what you're doing. And so look at the index you're, you're using, especially if you're doing yourself, and ask yourself, why am I using those? What are they really going to do for me when my world changes and I need income and markets could be down, what does that mean? What does it look like? Everything's great when it goes up, isn't it? Everybody's just so happy and the, it's euphoria. Happens all, all the time. Will growth keep outperforming value? That's the big question right now. We saw the, that this past week with interest rates, with the uncertainty that all of a sudden hit the market. Value could very well come back into favor. And if you're not in it, you're not going to make it because these markets move so fast now that unless you're well diversified and you have exposure, you're just going to miss it. It's that simple. And so, you know, do you buy large cap value? Are you buying small cap value? What type of value are you buying in this environment? There's also reasons for that. So you need to ask yourself that question. Are you, are you using both growth and value and what could happen to growth here in the future? Do individual stock selection, does that hold more value in this environment, meaning owning stocks that pay dividends perhaps, that are defensively based? Hmm, good question. Is my portfolio prepared for potential continued volatility like we just saw this past week. You know, a few more weeks like this and could all be gone. Could be negative. So these are the types of questions that you should be asking your advisor right now. And if you don't have an advisor, well, what can you do? Well, right now is the time to take advantage of the current environment that you're in. The market is fairly high overall. Interest rates are very good right now when you compare them historically. And tax rates right now are also pretty good when you look at what's going to happen in the next year and three months. Because those are going to change in a big way. And for most of us who pay taxes, your taxes are going to go up 8 to 10% just because. So now is the time to get ahead of that. Are you not sure how to get started? Is your money on the right track? Well, if your investment strategy isn't designed to take advantage of what I'm talking about, if you're not talking about these sort of things and having these sort of tax efficient conversations, then you got to be honest with yourself and say, look, I'm not going to get <laughs> an honest opinion from the person who gave me the first opinion. Try and get yourself a second opinion to see what else is possible. And you can do that right now. You can find out right now if there's other things you could be doing by calling this number 866-PROTECT. What you'll get is a 15-minute complimentary coaching call, just like they do on the sidelines when 
One of those players is making a bonehead move out there in the field, and we can all see it sitting on the couch. Why did you do that? You just cost us 15 yards. You just cost us the game. Are you serious right now? I mean, you see it. I see it. But you're not seeing it when it comes to your money. So make it easy. Pick up the phone right now. Call this number, 866-PROTECT. Talk to Lucas back there. He's sitting there right now. Lucas and Dylan say good morning. They're there. They're bored. Give him a call, would you? 866-PROTECT. Get your coaching call. Coming up next, it is time for our popular They Say segment, where we're going to discuss how the return of football reminds us that retirement isn't all about money. And later in the show, we will share how constantly improving your retirement game is key towards a secure retirement. So much more to come. Keep it right here. Welcome back. I am David Hollander, also known as the Sandman. And you are listening to Protect Your Assets this morning. And people around here, they call me the Sandman because I help you sleep well at night, particularly with weeks like we just had this past week, by making sure your plan's in place and doing what it's supposed to do. And that's because I've been running a tax, legal, and financial firm for over 30 years. We've seen Many, 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 many cases and more than happy to share that experience with you. So today we are talking about what the return of football has to do with your retirement. And if you watched that USC LSU game last week, you know what I'm talking about. If retirement is a priority for you, well, it only happens when you have a plan to get you there. So if the drop this past week in the market or the upcoming election or interest rates going down has you concerned, well, don't just sit there. Get a plan to protect your retirement savings. You can set up a 15-minute coaching call right now with one of uh, our team members, maybe even myself. Call the phone number 866-PROTECT, or you can always connect with us on our website. Now it's time for one of our fan favorite parts of the show, our They Say segment where we debunk common myths, half-truths, and sometimes just bad advice that they say. All right, so here's one they say, and I hear this a lot. They say that retiring and retirement planning, well, it's about how much money you have. Well, that's important. We've talked about this before the retirement. It's about more than just money. Like what? Well, let's go back to football, shall we? And when you think about football, you think about the really amazing players. What do you think about? The players are bigger than the game, aren't they? Their personalities, just their, everything about them makes you smile. Ayuk, bigger than the game. Love these guys, right? That you just do. When they make a catch like that, how do you feel? It's just incredible. So, because football has returned, so has the debate over standing for the anthem. It's coming back. And how players demonstrate their positions on social and political topics. It reminds us that while the sport is important, there are other issues outside of the game that we all deal with. With your money, it's important to stay informed and look at the dollars and cents. But you always have to ask the question, what's it all for? What's your greater purpose? What causes do you care about? And how can those assets that you've accumulated, how can they be marshaled in an effective way, maybe even a tax-favored way, to support those goals while you're still on this planet and you can enjoy what you can accomplish with that? So now could be a great time to reevaluate your portfolio, but also take a look closer at your personal priorities. Make a list. And how can you support some of the broader goals that are important to you? Maybe it means being more socially conscious when it comes to investing and being more selective about the companies you invest in. Maybe it means increasing your gifts to charity causes each year that support your worldview. And remember, think about this, tax rates in about a year and a half, and I'm talking about estate taxes now, They're going to be 40%. 
on everything over about $7 million. And if you have an IRA that will most likely be around past you, that will be ordinary income to your beneficiaries and will be part of your estate. So you could be, they could be looking at, get this, 35% tax bracket if, say, they're earning over $400,000 in that particular year, plus state of 10%. That's another 45%. So if you think about this, 85% of that IRA account could end up going to taxes. And if that doesn't cause you heartburn or discontent, then you need to learn about how you can use those IRAs right now, again, at very possibly no tax impact to you whatsoever. That's right. There's ways to do this where you can use distributions out of those accounts now, transfer those monies to things that you really care about and some serious money too, and pay no taxes to do it and get a lot of benefits on it. And then if you do it in some other ways where it's even bigger and you want to make more impact, still save a ton on taxes. All this is possible to map out and to look at. You need the right equipment to defend yourself. And I think back to World War II and you look at even sports teams today. Some of the teams that just have all the new equipment that have the money to pay for the coaching, that have the money to pay for all the equipment, and you see them stack up against a team that doesn't. Of course, we usually root for the team that doesn't. But you know, those kids are getting beat up on that field because they just don't have the same equipment. And let's face it, that little extra bit of padding, that new padding, you know what I'm talking about, feels a little better. Helps that sting just a little bit more. Are you doing that for yourself right now? You have that nagging question in the back of your head? Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not getting all that right now. Maybe I'm not getting those new pads, coach. Maybe you didn't give me that new helmet. Why not? Well, if you're not sure, set up the coaching call right now and let us look at your equipment. Call this number, 866-PROTECT. I want the Sandman and his team to take a look at my stuff, coach. 866-PROTECT. Give us a call right now, and you can find out if you're being protected. 866-PROTECT. It's time for a quick break. But please keep it tuned right here, because when we come back, we're going to share how constantly improving your game is key to successful conclusion, even a touchdown. The answers are coming up next. Keep it right here. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Bay Area. I'm David Hollander, also known as the Sandman, and you are listening this morning to Protect Your Assets. And people around here, they call me the Sandman. That's because I help you sleep well at night by answering questions like, well, why did the market go down so much this past week? What can I do about it? We are here to help you. I've been doing this for over 30 years. I'm more than happy to help you. Today, we are talking about football, whether it's college or professional and how it compares to your retirement, and what are some of the lessons you can take away from how football prepares and how they work through the season, especially if you're thinking about retiring or you're at or near retirement. We've been over the five things. We have one more to go. First was adjusting, not just giving up. It's not over till it's over. And second's being bigger than the game. Third, always keep improving. Fourth, make sure you have the best equipment. And five's coming up, so give me a break here. I think there are a ton of similarities between football and retirement. When you think of halftime during a college football game and the coach is out there yelling at the kids, they adjust their strategy, hopefully, change their goal to win the second half and the game. And this could be the same for your retirement. Remember, retirement is halftime. There's a whole other half to play, so much more to live for, and you probably need to adjust your strategy to help reach that ultimate goal. And if you're in that goal and you realize, well, I got a lot more than I need, then you adjust again and you do some more important things. We were talking about that last segment. All right, so what's number five? What's the fifth thing that we can learn from football? It's 
kind of obvious, but let's get into it. Your attitude. <laughs> See the silver lining. I love this one. This can be hard to do, especially when things are down. Let's face it. Sometimes things are really down. It's a hard day. And as easy as it can be to get down about whatever that is, do your best to find the positives. Maybe you cannot go on a cruise to Europe, but your grandkids are available for an outdoor movie in the backyard. Maybe you can't go to that football game, but you can try a virtual game at home with your friends, play fantasy football, do something. Start something. Maybe you can't go to yoga anymore, but you can buy an electric bike and you can start to explore the beautiful outdoors that we have around here. There's so much other things you could be doing and you don't have to go buy it. You could rent it. Nothing wrong with renting and trying it out. It's a lot cheaper too. Life in retirement is going to throw you curveballs. I've seen this for 30 years, whether it's the market or something in your personal life. The happiest retirees that I work with, they find joy in the little things. They adapt to the changing world. They're changing bodies. And they stay active, as active as they can. And they are smart about what they're eating. They get that exercise. They find creative ways to engage and enjoy the world around them. It's all about the attitude. So the world of sports is figuring that out as well, right? Especially when things are down, when you're in the second half, you're, you're at halftime, you just had the worst first half you've ever seen and things aren't going right, but all of a sudden things start to click. Maybe you have a conversation that changes the way someone's thinking about something and the next thing you know, they go back out in the field and they're making those catches, they're making those passes, they're actually getting through the defenders. Things are starting to happen. And that's all you need is a little bit of momentum. And all of a sudden, it opens up and now the points get close and you're there. And you could win. These things happen all the time. But you really have to be honest with yourself. And you have to ask, am I getting the right help right now that I need? So listen, if you need help, we can help you develop a strategy that if you want, can leave as little money in your estate left. You can enjoy it all while you're still here. Spend it and doing things that you probably never thought you could do. I see this all the time. People come in, they have way more than they need. And once we show them how much they can spend every month, we can actually figure that out. Exactly how much you can spend each and every month and how much you can leave to wherever you want to leave it. And so if that's what you want to do, you want to live your best life, well, you can do something about it right now. You can pick up the phone and you can call me. 866-PROTECT, and we can show you how to do that. But before you do that, I want you to get straight in your mind. So here's what you need to do. I want you to inhale through your nose right now. Close your eyes. Inhale through your nose. If you're driving, please pull over. <laughs> Exhale through your mouth. That's it. And now in your mind, I want you to picture your ideal retirement where you're on that field of whatever you're wanting to do. And you can see the end. You can see the result. You can see the conclusion. So come in and find out how to do that. Get your questions answered. Finally, see some clarity. 866-PROTECT. I'd like to give a big thanks to the Protect Your Assets team for putting together a great show today. My executive producer, network manager, Kevin Renfer. And of course, all my fabulous producers back there working hard this morning. Dylan, Lucas, Raf. Because without my team, I'm just another pretty voice on the radio. You've been listening to Protect Your Asset Show. I am David Hollander, the Sandman. Go out and make the rest of your life the best of your life.